Hey everyone, sorry for being a little bit late getting this July recap out. Things have been crazy for me lately to say the least. But what a month. Uh, this really was one of my most consistent months yet. And I checked an item off of my trading bucket list, I guess you could say, because every single day this month was green. And I don't think I've ever done that before. And that's not to say that I didn't make mistakes. I think I had about four entries in my lost journal this month. Uh, but none of them were really all that out of hand, and I'll definitely go through them later. But I was just fortunate because these mistakes came on days where the market was busy enough and there were enough winners for me to overcome losses. But the consistency of the month, I mean, that was really cool. It was fun for me to uh, kind of get this kind of a green streak going. Up until this point this year, I think my best green streak had been 10 days in a row. So it was just awesome to put through a month where every single day was green. And it added up fast, the $212,000 a month. It's just absolutely insane. I haven't had a month like this since 2014. And back in 2014 when I did it, I probably was doing it the wrong way, where I wasn't cutting losers, I was going on some rides, and just waiting for the stock to fade back and go in my favor and for everything to just work itself out. So, it, I mean, it may have worked, and I may have had big months in 2014, but it was a very reckless and dangerous way to do it, and that's what set me up for some of the big losses down the road. So it's really satisfying for me to be at the point now where I'm getting back to these numbers, um, you know, pretty close to all time best months. And I feel like I'm doing it the right way. And I feel like I still have a ton of room to size up. Now, July, of course, it was a very active month. I mean, the low float market was just going crazy, especially those last two weeks. And you can see on the calendar that those two weeks were the bulk of my gains for the month. So I really was just trying to sit back, take what the market gave me. Uh, let some of these low float stocks go bananas. And then when I felt like it was on the backside, I would go after it short. And I had some big shorts this month. I also was able to catch some pieces on the long side, which is something that I don't normally do, but I've been working on it and trying to figure out how to maybe start getting a little piece of the move on the way up. And that's great too, because it keeps me out of trouble short. Because if I'm long the stock, obviously I'm not going to be short selling it at that point. So you know, it helps me stay a little more unbiased and just try to focus more on the action and uh, keep the trend on my side when I'm making these trades. But let's go ahead now and go through some of the low lights and highlights of the month. Um, obviously, I always like talking about my mistakes and trying to kind of work through what I did wrong there. The first one would be SGY. And SGY, that was a trade I entered on July 5th. It had been running pretty big ever since it had had its split. And it finally had a big red day. So I got short on the red day. I was riding it down. And I had a pretty nice position. I think I had a few thousand shares short. And I was up a buck fifty a share or so, I think, when it closed that night. And I was just looking for more fade the next day. I thought that, you know, first red day would continue with the second red day after that. And it did gap down a little bit, but then it ripped green on me. And it all just happened so fast that morning. It was one of those things where I, I think I was just a little overconfident that it was going to keep going my way. And I got caught with my pants down a little bit because when it kept on ripping up that morning, I didn't really know what to do. And I watched my entire unrealized gain evaporate and then some. So it turned out to be a stubborn hold on my part, and I had to take it off later in the afternoon, and it wound up being a $3,600 loss, so a little bit over my max loss of $3,000. So that was just a little bit of a frustrating winner turned loser, but ultimately it was the right move on my part. It was good that I took the stock off because eventually SGY got well into the 20s uh, later in the month, and this was one that I definitely had uh, quite a bit of activity with this month. Uh, we'll, we'll go over some of my good trades on it later. But really on this one, in this specific case, had I been following my rules, I really should have been out of this thing when it was breaking the 1250 area uh, from the previous day's resistance. It just was a case where I didn't want to watch that much of my unrealized gain evaporate. And instead of still taking small profits on the trade when it very obviously was a strengthening and changing trend, I let it turn into a loser instead. BGI was another stock that I really let frustrate me early in the month. Uh, July 7th, I entered the trade, and it, again, it was just a case of a stock that had run big. I was trying to time the reversal, fade it back down into the twos, but it kept on supporting the $3 area. And I got a bit emotional on this one, a bit over biased, because I kind of fell into the pattern where there were a lot of times where I shorted weakness on it and then would cover perks, and that is just the complete opposite of how I want to be trading. I don't want to short uh, weakness, even if it looks like the stock may be breaking down, because so many times I just get trapped like that. So I think I took a few small losses on it, and then eventually just kind of went for it on a trade where 
I said, you know what, I'm going to just stop chopping myself around. I want to try to focus on big picture of this stock. And I got short in, I think it must have been the 315 to 320 area. So my average really wasn't that great. And I swung it overnight. And at this point, it still had been holding $3 for a while. So it really was just a short that was way too close to support. And I knew it. And overnight, I was super uneasy because I could definitely envision it uh, holding up another day and ripping back up through the 350 area and then just smoking me and me getting stopped out in the fours. So I, I was in too big. I was in a position that really was just impulsive and a result of earlier frustration on the ticker. And the morning of the 8th, when it opened up, it had a small gap down. I was thinking, okay, maybe this goes in my favor now, finally cracks under three. And instead it spiked, it went red-green. And if I had been playing it off of the previous day's highs, which I probably should have been, it would have been about a $6,000 loss if I had to cut it through 350. And I didn't want to take that big of a loss. And that just means I was in the position, like I said, way too big from the start because I, I wasn't able to play off of the risk level that really mattered. So instead, I just got spooked on that morning spike. I said, oh no, I think it's going to break through 350. I stopped out randomly. It was still a $4,500 loss. So still, you know, much larger than my $3,000 max should allow. And it never even broke 350. So the main level that I thought mattered, it wound up holding. And then it just fell apart later in the week. So uh, that was definitely a bit frustrating for me and a result of earlier frustrations on the tickers. So I, I think I tried to stay away from it for the most part after that because I just decided I was a little bit too emotionally attached to it after multiple losses, especially that final loss that was a bit bigger. Uh, so I just stepped away and decided to let it do its thing without me. But annoying to let one chop me around like that. One last mistake I'm going to talk about is SPHS, and this is one that had really been running going parabolic uh, towards the end of the month. And on this specific day, it had gapped up and immediately rolled over and went red in the morning. And I saw that weakness in the morning, and I started thinking short rebounds because, again, it's an overextended chart. It's red. I'm thinking, okay, this is going to hold high a day and fade off. And I think I originally sized in pretty well for this one. Maybe I had sized in slightly too big, but it wasn't too bad. It, it was definitely close. And I was just risking it off a high a day. That was the plan, at least. And instead of continuing to fade off all day, stay red, roll over, it started to build back. And I was really surprised by it. And I didn't think that it was going to save after going red, after being that extended. And it finally made its red-green move. It broke through its high a day. And I just froze. And it, it ripped on me. It got up towards 7 and then it was holding up around seven and consolidating. So I just said enough is enough, I took it off. Uh, there was definitely some slippage on this one where I wound up covering much higher than I had originally planned on or wanted to. But on the bright side, at least I was out before $7 and I didn't have to write it up all the way to 850 because that would have been an incredibly stressful situation. Now it did totally fall apart in the afternoon and I did get a small short into that first rebound in the afternoon. I, I think I was short from the 7.15 area or so. And I wrote it down into the fives before covering up before close. But it wasn't the kind of size I was trading it in the morning. These afternoon uh, rollovers and tanks, I kind of have a little bit of trouble nailing sometimes. Uh, so this one caught me a bit by surprise. I had already kind of mentally checked out and said, okay, tomorrow I'll go after this instead. And then it just fell apart out of nowhere. So still with uh, that kind of afternoon volatility and my small short into the rebound, I more than made up for my morning losses on it. But still, it was just a little bit frustrating to uh, not have attacks with the same kind of size. So those are the most noteworthy few. I also had one other loss uh, in the month on REN. Uh, that was on July 13th. It was a $5,500 loss. But I can't for the life of me remember uh, how I was trading this or the circumstances of the loss. So... Uh, sorry for not having details on that one. But the bright side on all four of these July losses was that none of them were over $6,000. So none of them were double my risk or worse. So even though there was some stubbornness, even though I sized in too big on a couple, and I, I think it was a pretty even split, I think that uh, two of them were just kind of stubborn that I held longer than I should have, and the other two I was in too big. But I'm glad that none of them were really all that out of hand. Um, you know, I think I've said it in previous month recaps that, you know, I definitely want to strive for perfection. I definitely don't want to put myself in situations where I've sized in wrong or I'm holding a stock I shouldn't still be holding. But 
you know, sometimes it is still going to happen. No matter how perfect you try to be, mistakes happen. We're all human. And it's just a matter of what you do after that point. And again, you know, all, all year now, seven months into the year, I still have not fought a single one of these. I still haven't found myself in a spot where I'm in beyond my risk and I say, screw it, I'm going to try to turn this into a winner. And that's why this year has been just night and day difference in terms of my wins versus my losses and the fact that I haven't taken a crazy loss yet this year. I mean, glancing at my updated annual stats page, and I mean, I didn't have to put a new loser on this month, which is great. My, my fifth worst loser of the year is still just over $6,000 on CPXX. And my wins, I, I got to add a couple new wins to the list this month. And I mean, the ratios are just looking awesome here. I mean, my, my best winner is still three times better than my best loser. Whereas in months prior, or I'm sorry, in years prior, you could take all of my winners, add them up, and they would pretty much equal my worst loser. So uh, it's just so nice to be on the right side of this. And I mean, this is still goal number one going forward. Don't fight stocks. Don't try to add to ones that are outside of my plan and turn losers into winners. And I mean, the losses are just so much more controlled. And that makes such a huge difference in profit loss by the end of the year. So now let's just take a second to talk about a couple of my biggest wins of the month and some of the things I did right. And uh, the first one I want to talk about is EVOK because this was a nice surprise at the end of the month. And uh, this is what pushed the month over 200,000. EVOK, I mean, I, I don't really follow fundamentals. We've talked about that before. Uh, but I, I follow the charts. And the daily chart on EVOK, I mean, it had just a massive gap down earlier in the month. I mean, I don't know what the news was exactly, but you see something like that and you can assume, oh, hey, it was terrible. And it got faded off, faded off, faded off before finally reversing in the mid ones. And then had just a nice, crazy three days of run where it just was having huge gaps up, nice volume. And uh, this third day, I finally decided to start thinking about going after it because it had gapped up and opened up in the high threes. It had spiked through four. And being day three of the move, I'm already thinking, hey, I want to try to short lower highs. So, I mean, out of the gate on this, I really wasn't all that aggressive. I wanted to let it spike. I wanted to wait till it felt like momentum was turning a little bit. And after the morning spike, it failed at 420 and faded back off into the 380 area. I, I decided to start going for it. And I started building in into strength. Um, just high day risk, nothing special. It was just a regular size trade. And I think I eventually scaled myself into about full size on this. And as the day wore on and as pops seemed to be getting weaker and weaker, I put on another piece. I, I started thinking, okay, this thing's up a couple hundred percent. And afternoon pops, you know, like all day, just there'd be ramps up into the 420 area. And then you'd watch all these sellers come in and it would get knocked back. And then the midday perk only got back up to about four, just over, and then had that hard crack under 380. And so once I started to see that, that's when I said, okay, this really seems like it's getting weak. And I added in yet another piece. So I think that I was about 25,000 shares from around a 401 average. And every time I, I was being good on this one, this is one where I was adding into strength and you know not chasing weakness, chasing dips and screwing up my average. So the 401 average with 25,000 shares with the 420 being high a day, I mean, I wasn't even in double risk uh, if I still wanted to play it off a high a day. And really, I mean, I, I guess that you know I would have absolutely forced myself to stop out there if it had gotten there. But I was going to trade defensively and be ready to take off in case uh, you know it started to strengthen and look like it was recovering into the afternoon. So even though I was sized in for the $5,000 risk, I wasn't necessarily going to let it get to that point. And in the afternoon, I was just kind of chilling, waiting for it to break down. And then just the offering hit. And I'm, I'm no, I was not expecting the offering. I did not think that... I was going to get an offering that day. I was mentally gearing up for a swing. I thought this was going to be a trade I'd be taking off in early August after a couple of days of fade. But it gave it to me all in one afternoon. And huge tank down into the 250 area. I mean, I, I took it off at 285. I was, I was just thrilled to have the chance to get out into that kind of a move. And ultimately, it didn't really wind up tanking that much further than 250. So I, I guess I caught the meat of the move, and that's all you can ask to do over a dollar a share on it, but it was just great to kind of slowly build into a winner on this thing as the afternoon action went on, as it looked like it was weakening. 
And then the offering, I mean, like I said, that, that was kind of lucky, but I think it wound up uh, down where it would have anyway if I had had to wait a couple days versus getting it all in a 30-minute move. Back to SGY, because I said we would talk about that one again. And really, there were a couple big-time highlight trades for me on SGY after I had taken that original loss on it. So SGY, it had kept on climbing. It had gotten up into the 1650 area and then paused there for a couple days. A couple days where it had red daily candles, but still was hovering right around uh, up on the day or break even on the day. And it was just not falling apart. And I think during those days especially, I remember noticing that a lot of energy stocks and oil stocks were really, really weak. And so I was saying to myself, wow, like SGY is holding up through this even though the sector is getting killed. So that is some incredible relative strength. And I mean, I I like breakout setups in the first place, but then you add that in and that made me like it even more. And so this day on uh, July 11th, when it finally was starting to break out past the 1650 area, I got long and I got long based off of about $16 risk. I I don't think I was even in full size. I I think I had 4,000 shares long from 1650 ish and it was $16 risk for me. So it had a nice afternoon ramp on the 11th and then a huge gap up on the 12th. And it was hard for me not to take profit to that point. So I, I paid myself pretty quickly, um, I think in the $20 area on the 12th and made about 15 or 16,000 on this trade, uh, $4 a share, which I was thrilled with. And then it kept going to 25 and I felt a little ill because I was wondering why I didn't trust my breakout setup. But still, it was just uh, you know a lot of fun to get the long side of one of these things that was just squeezing like crazy. And then if you fast forward even a couple more days, I mean, it struggled up in the 25 area. It had a few pushes uh, a few days in a row up back towards 25, and it kept on failing. And so at a certain point, I just said, okay, it's time to sort this thing. I've got to build in because it was just up so ridiculously. I mean, after the split, this thing had opened up at about $5, I think. And now it was up at 25 And yeah, it had had a lot of aggravation on the way up. Yeah, it had been really choppy. But I knew at some point this thing was going to fade off and it was going to come in for me. So I started trying to work on, again, just the same principle of getting in on lower highs, scaling my way in. And it was one where I let myself build into a winner along the way. I think I first started on the 14th when it was consolidating above the 23 area. I was looking for that 23 breakdown. And I was shorting pops. I was building in. I was using 2350 as my risk. And I wound up with a pretty sizable position. I think I got about 5,000 shares short originally, risking off of about 2350 because that was the afternoon highs that had been holding all day on the 14th. And then I swung it overnight. And the next morning, it really cracked and faded off under 20. Had a big bounce up to 21. And I had paid myself a little bit in the $20 area. And then I put those shares on and then even some more up into the bounce to 21. And I got my position back up to 7,500 shares and then let it fade off and crack even more. On the morning of the 18th, when it cracked, it faded down, it was in the 18s. I paid myself in the 18s when it was all holding up and when it really just wouldn't break down any further. So the result of my SGY trade, uh, I mean, that was about a $29,000 gain. Uh, So between that short towards the end of the play and then the breakout play on SGY, I more than made up for my losses. So, I mean, those were a few of the most notable wins of the month. But really, there were just so many others. Again, it was just low float mania. And every single day, it was just business as usual, waiting for the first red day. Or if it was a stock that was still squeezing, but I felt like it was up enough, going after lower highs, but with those trying to be a little more willing to let myself take a loss. Um, Cutting the ones that weren't working, not putting myself in stubborn situations, not exhausting myself on the front side of the move so I could be ready to short sell later. It was a really fun month, and I by no means expect every month to be like this. I don't expect my months from now on to be $200,000 a month or better. I mean, like I said, I was very fortunate that July was as active as it was, but it was unusually active. So, I mean, you've got to manage expectations. You've got to take what the market gives you. And this month, I did a good job of taking what the market gave me and taking advantage. But if August turns out to be really slow now, I'm not going to start pressing and say, oh, no, I'm not going to match July. Now, I mentioned in June that I was going to keep my risk the same going into July because I just hadn't been totally comfortable mentally with a $3,000 loss yet. And I feel like I'm there now. I finally have reached that comfort level. I I was cutting my losers pretty well for the most part overall in July, even though I did have four that I had to ultimately log. But going forward, I'm going to up the risk. I'm going up to $4,000 risk now because I feel really good about where I'm at. I feel like I'm trading really well. 
And even the situations where I am in a little too big or playing a little too stubborn, I, I don't let it get out of hand like I used to. I don't try to fight it. So I'm ready to take that next step up and risk. That being said, I am going to be kind of careful the next few months here. Uh, I'm, I'm entering an interesting period of the year here where I have just a ton of travel planned. And at the same time, I'm feeling kind of burned out. And it may sound weird saying I'm burned out after what's been really four great months in a row, but they still are mentally taxing. And I've put myself in the position so many times in the past where I just try to push through, push through, push through, and it always ends in a big loss. So this time, I've already taken a couple days off in August, and I'm going to really be trading sporadically from pretty much now until the end of October, I think, uh, just due to all the trips I have planned. So unfortunately, this is going to be the last monthly recap I do for a few months. Um, I mean, I don't know how much I'm going to be trading. My goal, I think, is to kind of just try to really sit back a bit and let myself relax, only show up if I see something on a scanner at night that looks just way too good of an opportunity to pass up. But, you know, scaling back a bit, not approaching this so much full time for a few months and letting myself enjoy my trips, I think will be hugely refreshing mentally. And I've got to say, it's kind of uh, nice for once to be doing this for myself before I take that big loss and have to force myself into it. But yeah, just due to not being home, not trading much, I I don't think it's going to do much good to do the monthly recaps for the next three months or so. Um, But, you know, once I get back to the trading full time, uh, which should be November or so, hopefully, I I will get back to it and I will I will get some videos up again and maybe even make a short video just talking about maybe compacting the three months into one video where I was trading part time and just talking about the highlights and lowlights of that time period. But I've got to say thank you to everybody who's watched all the monthly recaps up to this point, everyone who's offered words of encouragement, words of support. It's been just amazing, uh, all the feedback you guys have given me and all the encouragement along the way because, I mean, this was really quite a crazy journey for me ever since uh, November when I first came up with this and just sort of said I have to redefine who I am as a trader. Because all those stubborn losses had just crushed me emotionally and mentally. So thanks for all the help uh, holding me accountable. And I hope that you guys have been able to take something away from this process I've put myself through. The fact that month after month it really is just constant self-reflection for me. And especially on the mistakes front. uh, Analyzing the mistakes, embracing the mistakes. um, You know, you can't hide from them. You've got to admit your faults, admit your weaknesses as a trader. And then you need to either get yourselves out, get yourselves out of those weak situations or work on correcting them. So thanks again, everybody. I've really appreciated the support. I hope to meet a lot of you at uh, the various stock conferences I'll be doing this fall. Um, I mean, I'll be in Orlando in September. I'll be in Vegas in October. And I'm really looking forward to continuing to grow as a trader and make more of these videos later in the year. My name is Tim Sykes, and I teach people to trade stocks. I am a self-made multimillionaire. So this is the ideal trade that I'm going to talk about. I want you guys to understand every single aspect of this trade. 